Hello and good evening and welcome to Writer Chat on Thursday about the 22nd, 22nd, probably about the 22nd. Um, right, I'm your host, your, your very forgetful host, Gerald Hornsby, because of course I've got the time wrong and I, I said to my guest tonight that uh, we'd start at six because that was more convenient for her and then totally forgot about it, so apologies. Anyway, uh, welcome to you, uh, Anu Gupta, pleased to see you. Hi. Yeah. Very good. Um, okay, it's it's. <laughs> oh, I was just saying to Annie that I was I was so well organised and so prepared, and and then she <laughs> said she got, sent me a message saying, "Did we say six? I thought, "Oh God!" So um, we're all right. We're we're here now. Yeah, yes. <clears throat> Very good. Right. So Annie, um, so you uh, you live in London at the moment. Yeah. Um, but you were born in India. Yes, born and brought up there, grew up there. Moved okay. here, moved here about fourteen years ago. Wow, fourteen. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it, it, time does fly, doesn't it? It's crazy. It does fly. I'm thinking, oh, seven, eight. No, it's fourteen actually. Two thousand and one. Very yeah. good. And and uh, you did a bit of travelling before you came here. Yes, a lot of travelling. Yeah. Um, my husband's job required us to sort of go across the globe. Um, yes, yeah, so we did a quite a bit of travelling and finally found our way here. This was meant to be a stop on the way back to India, actually. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was meant to be a two-year stop, and um, somehow um, nothing else came up in other parts of the world. He continued to be here, and uh, now this is home. Very good, very good. Yeah. Well, we're glad to have you. Um, so, um, so you're a writer, obviously, and you're also an illustrator or an artist. Um, how, have you always written? Um, I've, I've always written, I think. Uh, I was thinking about it when I um, you know, was coming on the show and I thought, oh, I'll probably get hours to I always write. I, I think I, <laughs> I always wrote, but you know, in school uh, I was writing. Um, but it was something that I wasn't doing consciously as a piece of writing. Um, I don't know if I was any good at it because I didn't show it to anyone. Right. I wasn't very attached to my writing. It was just meant to be something um, I'd want to capture a moment or express something. And as soon as I'd done it, I'd probably just throw it away. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I never thought I was going to write or you know take up writing as a career or a profession. It wasn't a conscious choice. It just sort of happened. Okay. Yeah. It, it's. Um, I, th I think we're, we're all a bit like that, aren't we? You you, you start something because. You start doing it because you love it and, and you want to do it. You, you you don't start writing because you think you're going to be able to make a lot of money from it. No, no. And and for me, it was writing started as being a means to something. Um, when I was in India and we had to choose our stream of education in college. In India, it's a bit more rigid. You can either choose science or commerce or arts. And at the time, I, I didn't know that I could do any painting at all. I didn't know I could write at all. So, and I didn't want to go into science. And, you know, with this strange process of elimination, I went into commerce. Oh, and I hated it, absolutely hated it. And I said, <laughs> what am I doing here? <laughs> and there was one subject for advertising. And it was the only one that really grabbed me. And I, I knew as soon as I graduated, I'd go into advertising. And so I um, took up a job as a trainee copywriter. And I loved it. I just, I loved the writing part of it, the creative part of it, the, the creating the concepts, um, understanding the psychology. So it was the whole thing, and writing was part of it. But as I got into it, I was thinking, oh, I love this. I love the words. I love creating things. And it, it came to me quite naturally. Um, and then after I'd been a copywriter for a while, things I met, I was on the way back from work one day. and. I met, a, met somebody I knew on the local train, Mumbai local train, and we were all crowded and we were just standing there. And she just happened to tell me she worked at a travel magazine. And I was like, wow. Because in India at that time, I didn't know there was a travel magazine. And other than writing, the, the thing that I loved most was traveling. And I thought to myself, if I could just write, get into the travel magazine, then I could travel and write, which would be great. That sounds and, fantastic, doesn't it? It's, yeah, it's, I know, and I couldn't stop thinking about it. And I had no training in writing. I hadn't gone to school of journalism or anything like that. And after pondering over it for about a week, I landed up at the office and I said, I really would 
like to become a travel writer? What do I do? And the editor looked at me, and um, he, he was a professor at a very big, um, very renowned college in Bombay. And he said, well, uh, where do you live? And I told him this little town. He said, why don't you go back and write me a piece about your town and bring it back? And that was my very first real piece of writing. Wow. <laughs> and I took it back to him, and he said, and he edited it for me. He made little markings on it, and I said, this is not bad, um, you know. So when can you join? They had a, they had a position, and I said to him, "Look, don't pay me. Just teach me, and I'm happy to just come on, you know, and work." And it was great. So I think I started into nonfiction, and that's what I've always done: nonfiction. Basically, I learned on the job. I was learning every day, and then we, when we moved, um, I sort of you know freelanced as a travel writer for a while. And um, so. Yeah, so I've written non-fiction. My poetry, I don't know, it's not fiction. So poetry is the first kind of um, creative, really creative writing that I did. I, I know what you mean, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so that, that's, I, I, I admire the fact that you just sort of turned up on this, this magazine's doorstep and, and sort of knocked on the door and said, hello, <laughs> can, I, can I have a job, please? <laughs> It's good to be young and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. foolish, and, you know. Very bold, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think twice now about doing something like that. <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think we all, because we're all thinking, you know, what go what would go wrong and what would they say and exactly. how would I feel and all this sort of stuff. So, um, so and, and poetry, you, you, you've you've written poetry. Um, how how did writing poetry come about? About did that. Yeah. Was that again? Was that something you've always wanted to do? Something you've always done? No, no, no. no. In fact, I just thought, oh my God, poetry is too deep, and poetry is not something I could ever do. Um, but what I didn't realize was, all my life, my my dad was a big music lover, and we'd had um, Hindi music, Indian music playing in our house all the time, and the Indian music is very um, poetry based. All the lyrics are poetry, oh. and I. By the time I grew up, I'd sort of memorized thousands and thousands of um, songs and the lyrics. And I loved the lyrics. And in my head, um, I was always sort of translating from in the Indian language into English in my head. Sort of, it was, it was constant in my head. And so I was living with poetry a lot, but I didn't think I would ever write it. Mm. And um, a few years ago, I just, I don't know, it was probably a, a time in my life I was in a zone and I just started to put certain things down and they came very, very naturally, very effortlessly. I don't think, uh, other than a couple of poems in the book, they're all the way they came out the first time, so I didn't have to sort of... Really? Yes, yeah, So there's no about. rewriting or, or anything, it just... Nothing, it's just, it's just exactly as I thought and it was there and it just felt, at the time I didn't think I was ever going to publish them, I was just, but I thought, oh, this is new and it's so effortless, it's not like my travel writing, it's not like um, advertising, I'm not thinking about it, it's just happening. And uh, I was very much in the moment. It was beautiful because uh, for the first time I was really expressing. Um, my thoughts and my words were in sync. And it was beautiful. So I kept them. And uh, I think it was uh, 2014, January, two years ago exactly, at this time, when um, it, 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 the year had not started very auspiciously. Things were going wrong and things were happening around me. And I was just being in sync. Life is so fragile. It's just. So transient, everything. And I thought, oh, I want to do something, make something that will stay when I'm gone. You know, and uh, and I thought, oh, I want to make something something that's very me. And, and I thought of these poems, they were really me, more than anything else. I thought if I could sort of, you know, just get them in print for my daughters, that was my first thought, just get a little sort of booklet or something um, and leave them behind for my daughters. But when I thought about publishing. I said, oh, let me see what kind of publishing I can do. You know, since I am going to do this, let me see how we can do this. And, That's fantastic. Yeah. We'll, we'll come to that in a second. So, so really, you started writing poetry because, yeah, I, I think as, as we, we get a little older, we, we become aware that, that you know, life is very, very transitory and, and you know, we have to make use of, of the time that we have. And, and yeah. And you, you wanted to leave a legacy for your, your daughters, which is, yes. which, is, which is really nice. It's, it, it's a, a lovely thought. Um, so, so basically, you, you, you had all this, this collection of poems, um, 
and you wanted to produce a booklet and, and then you started thinking about about you know publishing with a capital P as it yes. were. <laughs> yes and um, I did I think send, first I sent them out to some magazines I had sort of you know a few months ago and they got rejected but there was one magazine that said um, we are happy to do a little booklet for you. Okay. Um, this was sort of an Indo-English kind of magazine, oh. and and I was very. They were going to take about three of my poems, you know, in in an anthology kind of thing. And I thought, oh, if it's the only thing I ever get published, do I want it to be sort of a grey green booklet? Right. <laughs> yeah. I just I just wanted for it to be um, more beautiful. I think. That was yeah. my thought. Can it be a little bit more beautiful? You know. Um, yeah. So, so you sort of made you then, with that offer in mind, you thought, no, I, I, I want to publish it myself, and and then have the control over it, and and, yes, and produce and what, what you want to produce. Yes, I think I think the thought sort of then snowballed into that. It just started with thinking, oh, I just don't want it to look so drab and dull, and I just want it to look beautiful. And I think, oh, how do I make it beautiful? And um, I would sort of read about digital publishing and so I went online and I said let me figure this out. So I was doing a lot of googling and figuring out and, and um, sort of a few weeks into it I realized if I went into digital printing, um, by then I decided that what I, since I had very few um, poems, about I think they're 20-25 poems, I thought oh I'll make a, pa a painting for each one of them. Okay. And sort of it becomes a poetry art book somehow mm -hmm. it turned into that idea and, and then I thought oh well um, I'll get them digitally printed and it won't cost me too much but then as I read and understood more about the process they said you know a digital digital publishing doesn't quite give you the good um, quality when it comes to art it won't mm -hmm. be produced as well and I thought oh shoot I can't do that yeah. <laughs> so, and then I said, oh, so let's look at offset printing. And then I went to a few offset publishers and printers in London, and they were so, so expensive. I said, I can't do this. You know, it's, it's not viable at all. No, um, and, and that's, that's sort of minimum quantity of 1,000 or yeah. something, isn't it? Yeah, no, yeah. yeah, yes. And, and the way it works is you get the minimum 500. And after that, the incremental cost is very little. So if, you, if you're going to do 500, you might as well do 1,000. Yeah. But the first 500 costs a lot. Yeah. And but by that time, I was so seized by this idea of making this um, beautiful-looking coffee table book. And I said, oh, you know, what do I do? And then I started looking for printers outside of UK. And I was very lucky. I found a really good printer um, back in India mm. who, who actually print art books. Okay. And um, I was so lucky because I knew nothing about the whole process. I didn't mm. know how it worked. Mm. But I called him up, um, the office from here. And the guy who answered the phone that day, he literally sort of, you know, held my hand through the whole process. He explained everything on the phone. So I've got my whole book printed and published exactly as I wanted, just from talking to somebody in Bombay on the phone and saying, this is what I want to do. That's and fantastic. Yes, it, it, was, it was quite wonderful how it just unfolded, actually. That's lovely. So, so it's not a publisher in Bombay, it's, it's just a printer. So. <laughs> They take your files and, and produce yes. paper. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So, so that's good. So so again, it's it's your it, it's the quality you want. It's the layout you want. It's the exactly style. The everything you want. Yes. Yes. So it, it was great because I said to him, look, I don't. He asked me what kind of what GSM, and I said, what is GSM? And <laughs> the paper. And so he sent me he sent me things and uh, uh, little samples. And I'd say to him, you know, and then we chose something that would look kind of substantial for the few number of poems I had. Mm. And it went on from there, and then the, what kind of binding, what cover we would, what I'd like. And I think I really enjoyed, it was sort of going back to my advertising days, I think, when we created the whole product. Right, yeah, I know what you mean, I, yes. I had the same buzz because I was designing the entire thing. Every page, every layout was um, put together, and I just sat in my kitchen and did that. So. <laughs> Fantastic. That's very good. So, um, did you use any sort of? Did you use something like Adobe InDesign, or did you use something, you know, something else to to lay out the book? No, I would lay it out literally on a piece of um, oh. A3 paper. 
Oh. It's my poem type set and printed, and I'd cut it out the way I wanted, and my painting next to it. And then I would scan it, and I made files the scans this. And I have a friend here um, who lives where I live, and she's a graphic designer. And once I'd done all of this, I talked to her and said, what, what, you know, would you know anybody who can turn these into printable files for me? Help me make this book. And she said, that's what I do actually for a living. And uh, that was another stroke of luck. And I said, really? So, um, yeah, so she joined, you know, sort of, um, I asked her to help me with it. And um, so I'd create the layouts, the pictures, we'd scan them, and then she um, put them into a printable PDF files, which we were then able to send off to the printer. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. that's that's, that's uh, a, a sort of very different. It's almost like a, an old school way of doing yeah. it, isn't it? It's yeah. laying them out on your on your table. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I sit down and I look back. I step back and think, oh, does that page look nice like that? Should the poem move just a little bit there and a little bit here? And it, it oh, was quite fantastic. wonderful. Yeah. Oh, that's that's really nice. So the um, I mean the the artwork that you've done, the illustrations and uh, and paintings that you've done. Um, would you consider yourself an artist? I mean, is is that something you do, or is it just something you did for the book? I, it's just something I did for the book. I have taken a few sort of when when I decided to make those paintings and illustrations, I was not confident I could do them on my own. So I started looking for an art teacher or an art class where I could do them. And once again, everything sort of was meant to be. And I found an art teacher very near me who just put up a ad on the internet a week ago and I found her and she was looking for some extra work and I went to her with my little poems the very first day and said this is what I want to do will you help me but I don't know where to start and she was very brave and she said okay um, why don't you leave them with me why don't you come back next week have a think and let's talk about it and started from there and she was very and she said I'll teach teach you how to use ink and paint and brushes and you do the rest. I'll teach you the techniques. Mm. But then you look at, you do what you want to do on the paper. So the creative side, she, she taught you the technicalities but you did all the creative yeah, so she stuff. Said, okay, this is, you know, you could use these, these mediums, you know, these brushes, you could do different things. And she said, just go home and experiment and experiment. And I was just using reams and reams and reams of paper and so much paint. And <laughs> but it was, it gave me a chance to sort of step back from my poem and think, um, what was I thinking? What, what was I feeling when I was with that poem? So every sort of illustration or photograph corresponds to a particular moment. And it was great because, and I always tell her I'm not an artist, and she'll say, no, if you have created about, what, 18, 20 paintings, then you are an artist, and I don't think I am, no. <laughs> 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 Oh, but it, it's great that you took that on because because it would be so easy just just to say, oh, I can't, you know, I can't draw, I can't paint, so someone else would have to do that, and then you have to go through the process of somebody interpreting your thoughts and feelings when you wrote the poetry, and and that would, I think, that would be impossible, wouldn't it? No, that would be absolutely impossible. Yeah. So this is sort of this is so it's grown so organically, it's so authentically me, um, and there's nothing amazing about me, but just the fact that it is me makes this book really special to say my daughters or or even it, it becomes one one whole, it's not in parts, so anybody who picks it up and reads it, it's not sort of disjointed, you do get the whole. Which which what, what which is what would happen if if you'd let your your two or three of your poems be used in an anthology, it's it's just getting your work into print, it's not again it's not you is it, it's not the, no. the whole you. And, yeah. you, and, you had, and you had this vision for a, a one work, didn't you? one piece of work? I did just one work. I just wanted this one work. And if I died after that, since everybody <laughs> around me seemed to be at the time, <laughs> it, it would be something nice to hold and to sit with on a, in, on a quiet afternoon or an evening and just open and feel, oh, this is lovely. You know? mm. Yeah, so, and, and your daughters too will, will, will say, you know, this our mother has created this for us and that's yes. that must be a nice feeling for them too. I think so. They are um, at an awkward age. One is too young I think to quite appreciate that. One is a teenager but I'm hoping. <laughs> so not enough said. <laughs> <laughs> In the years to come um, mm. they will appreciate it a 
a bit more, yes. So I think they do understand. I, they, they're very pleased because it's dedicated to them. Oh, that's lovely. In, inside the book, it's dedicated, so they're very pleased about it. Fantastic. That's, that's what a really nice idea. That, that's, and that's, I think that's not something that, that people would normally think of doing, um, creating something for a, a loved one or a family member or something like that, is it? They, they you know, no, it's all... It's, 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 sorry. I think people are daunted by the fact, actually. Even if the, the thought did come to them, mm. I'd like to do something like a memoir or something like that. They would like to leave something. Yeah, I know so many writers who are writing memoirs. And but if they would think about collecting all the photographs, putting them in a sort of a little book um, in their own way, they'd think it's too hard, it's too difficult, and it, they'll just stop there. But I'd want to tell anybody who's ever had that even a flicker of a thought that I might do that. It's not hard. It's not. It's it's so easily doable if you know who to ask, hmm. where to go. It's very easy. I didn't know anything about it when I started, and. It's turned out beautifully. So anybody who would like, you know, I'd say if you feel like it, go for it. It's very actually. It's not the hardest thing in the world now. No, I, and I and I think there are, there are lots of people who who become daunted a by by writing something, and, and I know because I've I've worked in and and with online writing groups for years, and and you do come across people who who, who try and write and say I'm no good at writing. It's I can't do it. But if you like you have, you, you've created a set of poems. If you created a, a set of a little essays or, or little stories or something, um, mm. and, and then maybe put a photo with them that you know reminds you of, of or, or just you know we went on holiday to so and so, and, and these are a couple of pictures. I mean that that's, and I, I'm sure not many people think of actually producing something for somebody else. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I suppose, um, yeah, it, yeah, maybe not. But I, I think there are there are those who want to live memoirs back for their family and their children, and um, and they should give it a shot. There are there are things there are pages in this book where I've just used photographs, <laughs> but I've done things to them and made them into pieces of art. Right. And um, and and the the title New Moon Rising. Yeah. Does that have significance? It does. Um, one, my when I was writing my poems, they didn't have a, they didn't have a story to them. They were just disjointed little verses that came. But when I was trying to make sense of them and putting them in a collection, um, I was able to do uh, five sections of them. And the, in the last section, um, the, the poems get a bit more, a little bit more spiritual, a bit more. Searching for the self, if you like. And um, in the Hindu traditions, and there's one poem which, and the book ends in, which which has the line "New Moon Rising." And we have um, in the Hindu tradition the the way we think in India, the new moon is a day when you don't see the moon actually. Okay. There's no moon. There's wow. no moon. Um, but you, you imagine that there is that sliver of a moon you can't see. So that it's just that before before the consciousness awakens. It's that moment before the first sliver of light comes into being. It's that space between, you know, sort of, it's where you begin to just begin to see a glimmer of yourself. You understand? Yeah. And yeah. for me, it, it was that. Through this poetry, I was just, I thought, you know, that's true. I mean, it was a process. And through this, I'm just about beginning to get my first glimpse of who I am. Okay. Yeah, that, I I can see that. I, that that's yeah, and and that's a nice a nice sort of meaning for the title too, isn't it? Again, it's it's part of you. You've put not only have you created this 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 book, but you've you've also given the title of something that's that's significant and means something to you. Yes, it's, yes. I think it's, it's, it's really. It, it, it was it was in part um, finding my voice I think for the very first time because I've written nonfiction like I said all my life and there wasn't it, it so I was I was I was writing to a structure I was writing to I hadn't quite I was writing and learned English if you would like mm, yeah in 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 the form so it was proper English but it wasn't um. 
I don't know if you're aware, in India, you know, a lot of Indian authors write in what is now known as Indian English. No, I, I didn't know, but, but carry on, yeah. So all the Indian authors, uh, quite famous ones, so when you read them, um, whether it's Amitabh Ghosh, contemporary writers, and the genre now is called Indian English, simply because it, when you read it, it is English, but it has, it reads almost like a vernacular, like an, it reads like as if English was a native Indian language, if you know. I, so, I, I understand, it yes. It was a native Indian language. Mm in the way the, the turn of the phrase and everything is a bit different. And okay. um, I love that form of writing and I think it's very authentic if you come from that background and you've always spoken like that and then if you're able to write like that. And I think this was my first real bit of authentic Indian English writing. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a learned form of writing, it came quite naturally as if I was speaking my mother tongue. Oh, very good, very good. So, um, so you've um, so you got the, the books printed out in India and presumably sent to you, um, and and you've got them on on Amazon. Have you got them in any other outlets? Uh, I have them. I have them in a bookstore here in Barnes, and I have them in two sort of gift shops in Putney and in um, Surbiton, where sort of because they are. Am I allowed to show it? Because it's like a little... Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yes, it, it's because it's, um, you know, it's like a little coffee table book. It's, you know, it, it becomes, it's like a gift. It makes a really good gift item, if you can say. Um, it's very... So I, I think they sell more. During Christmas, they sell in the bookshops as well, but they sell more in the gift shops. Yeah, I think when they go in looking for a gift, oh, I've I've kind of bought that, I bought that. I'm looking for something different. And yeah, I, I can I can see that. I can see that it it had, and, and being square format as well means that it's it's something different. It's not a people know it's not a book to be you know read a thriller or a crime or a romance or anything. It's there's something different about there's it, isn't there? And when they leap through it, because every page looks different, you can't, you don't really know what's coming in the next page. It could be a photograph, it could just be some calligraphy, something. And very small um, poems, which I think appeal to children as well as grown ups. So it's kind of quite a wide appeal, and uh, people think, oh, you, you know, that's a safe gift. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. <laughs> people right. may not love it, they will, but they won't, you know, may not hate it. So it's a safe sort of gift, and it does really well as a gift item, I think, more than a poetry collection. Yeah, I, I think so. I, I can see that, and, and I, I sometimes speak to to authors, and and you know they quite often they they will be able to get their their books into into local bookstores, and but I was speaking to somebody recently who's who who put their books in in a gift shop, and and it's a different market, and and it's more likely to get somebody seeing that and thinking, oh, that's different. It's yeah, you know, it stands out from the other gifts. Exactly, it does, and I think when somebody walks into a gift store looking for a gift, they have an open mind. They're wanting to find something that, that the person they're giving it to might like. Not like so they, they don't have a fixed idea. When you want to walk into a bookstore, people usually know what they want, crime or this. They don't sort of just wander in thinking, ooh, I'll just pick up one random book. Yeah. I think which is why when they come into a gift shop, they're more likely to pick it up. And, and it's a, it's a very... Our, about it. It's it's a very beautiful looking book too, isn't it? it it's it's quite it, it it fits. I'm sure it fits in with a gift shop. It's it's yes. very pretty and it's very attractive from, yes. from its cover. Yes, and um, that's the feedback I've got. And I've often um, when I go back and I say, can you tell me the kind of people who pick it up? Because I just want to know who who does it speak to, what what age? Uh -huh. um, and they say they've been across the range. Um, you know, there've been girls who bought it for their moms. Older ladies who bought, you know, for the grandmother's aunts or whatever, or someone bought it for his wife. So when they walk in and they think, oh, it's, it's beautiful. Then I look inside and I think, hmm, it's, um, you know, something that they might appreciate. Actually, a lady left a little note for me, saying, um, when she she walked in looking for a gift for somebody else, but her close friend had lost her mother recently, uh -huh. and she didn't know what she could say to her. But when she opened these, and there were a couple of poems that were about goodbyes and, and life, and it was quite life-affirming, and she said, I brought it for both her children, so my friend and her brother. 
and she left a little note saying, you know, it was the sort of, because I didn't know what I could say, your book said it all kind of thing, which yeah. is nice. That's, that's lovely. And, and that's, that's, I mean, I, I often tell this story of, of, of the, the sort of feedback that, that you get, and, and it's that, that first time when you get someone that you don't know say something nice and positive about yeah. something that you've created, is, is love, it's a wonderful feeling, isn't it? So wonderful. And I was thinking, I came back because she, she left a little note, and the per I know the person now um, because it's a local book and gift shop, and he keeps things for me, and he said, somebody left this for you. And I just thought, oh, it was, it's wonderful that something I wrote sort of um, comforted someone or talked to someone that I don't know, and I think that that was very fulfilling for me. Fantastic. Very, very good. Um, okay, that that's that's really nice. A fascinating story, and and, and you've you've gone a very different way about producing this book to to most people. Um, and I'm sure it provides some some ideas for for people and and to think about different a you know different things that they can produce, but also different ways of getting it into people's hands. Um, mm -hmm. And it's and and different outlets too. Um, now your your book is is available on Amazon in in hardback. Yeah. At, at, a, at amazing, is it five five pounds ninety nine? That's very good. Yes. It's, because uh, can I can I say here um, the reason it's kept at a really low price is um, I want to sell as many as I can. I did have to print a large <laughs> amount, but when yeah. I was when I was sending when I decided to make it and I thought oh, I'm really. Um, my daughters are really fortunate that I'm able to do this for them. Um, so I want to do something for other children. So all the money that I get from the sale of my books um, goes to support different children's charities. Oh, so, so they are they are here. They're being sold so that you know I can raise as much money as I can for some children's charities. So, um, so for the, for me the price, which is why I'm able to sort of. Um, be more generous about it because I just want to get as much as I can so I can and give it. And we've, I've raised uh, a lot of money. I've raised about a thousand pounds so far for two children charities. Oh, fantastic! That's yes, very, um, very good. Yeah. Well, that's, that, well, it's it's a it's a great story. It's a lovely story, um, and uh, I I think we'll 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 sort of call it to a, a stop there. So the book's called New Moon Rising. Yes. Um, available at Amazon or. In, in your local area, but uh, probably for most people listening, it would be uh, it would be an Amazon job. Yeah. But um, but it's a it's a very lovely thing and, and a nice thing to own, I think. Um, Thank you. Right Thank then. You. Well, we'll Thank we'll you get... so much for having me. That's Thank a pleasure. You. Really. I was very nervous to start with, but it wasn't too bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I, I'm I'm, very, I'm pleased to hear because because most people do say that, and and um, I, I I try to make it as as informal as possible, but. Um, but but still get the message across. So yeah, um, it was great. It was, great. It was lovely. Okay. Well, thank thank you for my viewers. Um, we have some live viewers, and if anybody sees this and wants to see more of these writer chats, we've got a, a subscribe link down underneath on YouTube, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, and then um, I'll say thank you for watching and thank you, Anu, and uh, mm -hmm. hopefully speak to you again sometime. Thank you. Bye bye.